All right. Everything's put together. Let's see if it boots up. And push the power button. All right, comrades, today we're doing a video that's entirely different than anything I've done before. I am going to be building two new computers. Um, one will be a streaming PC and one is going to be my wife's gaming PC. So I wanted to give you a rundown of the parts I chose, why I chose it, and why I even think I need a streaming PC to begin with. So first of all, I'll just give you a quick rundown of my current setup. I have a Jarvis uh, sit-stand desk. These two monitors on the side that are vertical are just some old Dells. They're like 1920 by 1200, 60 hertz. Um, pretty old school, I got them in 2007. This middle one is a BenQ 144 hertz monitor, um, TN panel, you know, it's, it's not ideal for editing and video work that I've been doing. So I used to work on a Mac and that was everything I did. But since I've been gaming and streaming more, I transitioned fully to PC. I sold my Mac and this is my uh, rig over here. It's got an i7 6700K and a GTX 1080 in there. That dude's drifting off in the snow. We got winter here already, boys. All right, one thing I wanted to do was go through the parts that I chose and the reasoning behind it. If you want to skip this part, there's time codes in the description. Feel free. So let's start with the streaming PC. My first challenge, as I said in the intro, was I'm rendering Premiere videos all the time. I'm streaming at 6,000 kilobits and I'm trying to record at 50,000 kilobits on the NVENC codec. So I was really stressing out my GPU while I was playing games and when I was trying to do like more graphics heavy games like Call of Duty or Apex, OBS was just getting encoding lag like crazy. So I was also getting into Plex and I want to have a Plex server but obviously with all that stuff going on, I'd be having to tell my family like, hey, don't stream any Plex things while I'm rendering or while I'm uh, gaming and streaming. So I just wanna have a dedicated computer that's just gonna be like the rendering machine. So that being said, I knew that Ryzen was the right choice they have tons of cores, fast speed, at an incredible price. So for this streaming PC, I was looking at the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 5 series. If it was just gonna be a streaming PC, that actually would have been perfectly fine. Like I saw that you could get the lowest Ryzen card. Shout out to Harris Heller's video tutorial. I watched him get uh, the lowest Ryzen CPU available and it was able to stream uh, using the CPU X264 codec and it only scraped like 30% of the CPU. But the thing is, um, I'm obviously going to be uh, running a Plex server as well and there might be multiple streams happening. So I wanted to play it safe and because I'm gonna be rendering Premiere uh, projects on here, I figured I may as well just go a little bit above and beyond. Now here's why it landed on the 2700. It's only uh, $140. Now the Ryzen 5, which was gonna be the first option, was going for about 114. Now one thing I was looking at is what's called the pass mark score on these CPUs. So my research was showing me that you can use the pass mark score to figure out about how many transcodes from your Plex server you can get at once. And the average seemed to be about 2000. So for this uh, Ryzen 5, the pass mark score of 13,000, you could get about six transcodes. Um, and I was trying to figure out like how much transcoding power is my stream gonna take? Is it gonna be about the same as Plex or a little bit more? I wanted to play it safe. The Ryzen 7 has a pass mark of 15,000, so I figured that gives me a little bit more buffer. Now for graphics, I wanna record uncompressed video ideally. I'm willing to you know sacrifice it if I have to, but I wanna record the highest bitrate possible of the gameplay for YouTube. I'd rather not have it compressed at all. So I went with the cheapest graphics card you could get that has the NVENC codec so that I can use that to record without affecting the stream from the CPU. If you look at NVIDIA's GPU list for NVENC, you'll notice that the first graphics card on there is the GTX 1050. Um, the 1050 Ti was like nominally more expensive and it had a f uh, more gigabytes of VRAM. So I just went ahead and went with the GTX 1050 Ti by Gigabyte, a low profile card. It should do the trick. Now I was looking at some other articles that were saying Ryzen really benefits from faster RAM. Now guys, this is getting into stuff that I am not super confident in and I have limited time to research, but um, here's an article I got from Gamers Nexus that did a lot of tests and you can see there definitely is an FPS improvement from having the faster RAM. I don't know if it's necessarily more beneficial to Ryzen. I'll be honest, I didn't read the entire article. I skimmed it, but I saw that the price increase for getting the um, 
Well, in the middle of recording this video, I just realized I forgot to order the RAM for both PCs. So, now we got that ordered. Um, and as I was saying, so I'm not entirely sure the benefits in terms of streaming, recording, rendering of the RAM and the Ryzen cards. So I kind of went middle of the road. I went with the 3200. The motherboard could support up to 4066, but I thought 3200 was a good um, upper middle class speed. And uh, that's what I went with. Now the case I chose um, was definitely not the cheapest. I only did it to match my current case, as I mentioned in the intro, the Define R4. So I got the Define R5, because they don't make the R4 anymore. And from what I saw on YouTube, they are going to match almost perfectly. So that's kind of important to me for aesthetic reasons. So that's what I went with. All right, and then for the final touches, I've been using a 1080p, 144 hertz monitor for editing, not ideal. The colors are not great, and the 1080p is just crunches all the UI together. So I finally decided to invest in a 4K monitor. I was debating, guys, for a long time, should I go for one of these combo monitors? They have 144 hertz monitors at the 2K resolution. It does seem like the perfect sweet spot, but really, um, I am a sucker for FPS, guys. I want to hit over 100 frames per second in these shooter games. So even with my GTX 1080, which I have on my PC now, I'm still hitting those FPS limits. Like, I am not climbing above 144 hertz on the new games. So I want to stick with my 1080p monitor. I'm actually happy with it. On Black Friday, I got this LG 27UL600 for only $276, it's the open box version. And the reason I went with this card is because this website, ratings.com, gave it the number one photo editing and video editing 4K monitor review. And I really respect this site. These guys um, review every aspect of the monitor into very extreme depths. And for the price, I just thought, why don't I just get the best of both worlds? I'm happy with 1080p, 144 hertz. Let's just get a 4K 60 hertz monitor just for the editing and the server. Guys, it's Saturday. All the parts are here. It's like seven in the morning, but uh, I'm too excited. We got to get started. I mean, look, all the stuff is here. There's the, there's the cases. Uh, I'm gonna get after it. And by the way, this is only my second and third PC build ever. So uh, I might mess up. I'm gonna try to do it right, but let's see. All right, well, with a little bit of an embarrassing struggle, I finally got the motherboard in the case. Um, next up, I'm gonna put the uh, M2 drive. Let's do it. All right, guys, I had to watch a couple videos on this because this was terrifying. Um, the only PC I've built was a Intel CPU and I just watched a video on this, I didn't know, but uh, with Intel CPUs, the pins are on the motherboard, but the way AMD builds them is they put the pins on the CPU itself. So naturally, I thought, you know, it would have to face this way, like visually you'd want it top down, but um, it wasn't dropping into place, and I, and I watched the video, I rotated it this way, and you just heard it just plopped in there. No force required. What you're really missing out on is reading the smallest font ever printed and plugging in the tiniest plugs ever built by man under minimal light conditions. It's amazing. I'm really learning how old I am because my back is just hurting. So we got most of these motherboard cables in. These little ones, it's so hard for me to tell if it's right or not. So I'm just gonna have to test them once I get it powered on. Um, let's take a look on the back side. Um, I had trouble identifying what the heck these were at first, but then I realized these are power cables for the fans that go directly into the case. And then you just um, power them with one of these like normal SATA power things. So, okay, next up, <clears throat> this is the server. So it needs some hard drives. Now the issue is I don't have all my data ready to go. So I'm gonna have to, um, transfer that a piece at a time. 
out of my gaming PC here. You can see I got several drives. One of them's not hooked up. So my plan is to create a temporary RAID on the server so I can move the data over to it. And I'm gonna move the Blu-ray player out of this one as well since I'll only be ripping discs on the server. I think we have all the wiring done. I'm mentally prepared for this not to boot up. Um, all we have to do is put in the RAM and the video card. Got our GTX 1050 Ti and some G-Skill Ripjaw 2 8 gigabit strips. Look how dainty this thing is. I think we got it, guys. All right. Everything's put together. Let's see if it bits up and push the power button. What's that? Oh, it's the Blu-ray. <laughs> Seems. Working. Making a bunch of noise. Don't see anything on the monitor yet. Oh! We have stuff on the screen! Dude. Reboot and select proper boot drive. Heyo! Dude! First time? <laughs> it's stressful. All right, so we're booting up Windows from our USB. I should have filmed myself doing it, but I just had to go into the BIOS and choose uh, the USB stick as my boot drive. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and set up Windows. Honestly, I just can't believe it's working on the first try. Like, wow. All right, comrades, the setup is done. Let's take a look at it. All right, well, the first thing you probably notice is we got some floating monitors. We got a uh, dual monitor mount from Elitab. Link in the description if you wanna check that out. Here's the 4K monitor with OBS all spread out on it. And since the premiere timeline was a thing of contention, let's take a look at what that looks like. Man, you can fit so much more in there. Here's both PCs side by side. The cases are slightly different. I did have this LED light wrong as I was afraid of in the build, but I got that fixed. Um, and I'm very happy with it, guys. My nice, simple setup, stream deck in the middle. Um, the wife's PC is working well, but we're gonna do that in a second video because this one needs to wrap up. So we, um, we had a whole build experience with this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just create a second video for that. But her setup is working. She's been streaming Lego. Let me show you some cable management stuff I'm uh, kind of proud of, guys. So obviously I can tighten this up a little bit, but I use command strips to uh, secure these USBs under my desk. And that's a switcher, how I switch between both PCs. Um, because this is sit stand desk, we need a lot of play with the cables. So having these hubs here, you know, allows one single cable for each computer to run. And that switch is controlled by this button here. So when I press it, I can switch over to this PC. Just like that. So overall, it's been a very good, positive experience, but I did learn some things that I am surprised by. Let's go ahead and recap those. All right, guys, here we are at the end of the video. I just wanted to recap some of the important things that I learned along the way. Number one, when buying a monitor mount, be sure to check the maximum weight per arm and make sure your monitor weighs less than that. Might seem like common sense, but I didn't think to check for that. 
All right, when installing a motherboard, it is so much easier to have the CPU and the CPU fan already mounted before putting it in the case. In the Stream PC, I really struggled to get a grip on the back plate because I already had the motherboard in the case and it was just a, kind of a struggle. Number three, I also learned that AMD has their pins on the CPU and they simply slide into the socket, no force required. Um, another thing was that each Ryzen CPU comes with a slightly different fan, so if you're after a specific one, be sure to check the listing and make sure you get the right part. Okay, so I mentioned in the part picker that I was choosing a specific RAM speed just to give it a little more boost for the Ryzen. Um, I wasn't sure if it was going to work. One thing I learned is that the RAM doesn't by default run at that speed. You have to go into the BIOS and like hack around the voltages and XMP profiles, stuff that I haven't really um, ever done before. I tried, didn't get it to work. So I'm gonna have to learn how to make that happen. Okay, number five, and this was a big one. So the whole point to having two streaming PCs was for buttery smooth gameplay on the video and while I was playing. I was trying to use OBS NDI, and that is transferring a signal over the network from your first PC to the second, and it was working fairly well. The problem was OBS was still using between 15 and 20% of the CPU and GPU, even while idle. So I felt that in my games, it was not at the smoothness I desired. So I went ahead and got a 4K 60 Pro. That solved all my problems. This thing just mirrors your display. So now my gaming PC can just fully commit itself to performing on the games and I love it. I noticed a huge difference. And by the way, I think we're definitely gonna do a benchmark video for streaming on one PC versus two with NDI and the capture card, just so you can see the actual differences in numbers. All right, and the last one, number six, voice meter can actually transmit audio channels from one PC to another using B-Band, a built-in piece of the software. It's incredible, so I can actually keep my audio channels separated on my stream PC, even though I have them all on the gaming PC. So that is a very cool feature. Props to voice meter for that. All right, guys, well, I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. I'd like to make more stuff like this, only if you want to watch it, though. If not, maybe I'll just throw it on the second channel. I had a lot of fun making it. So thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. I'll see you next time.